Hey guys, so I'm finally here at the uh, London Medical Centre. Uh, I'm gonna go see uh, Body Scan UK. I'm gonna see how fat I am. Just here to uh, see Phil for the body scan. Lovely. Can I take your name? My name is Roger. Lovely. Take a seat for me, Roger. He'll be out shortly. Okay, excellent. Thank You're you welcome. very much. Cheers. Hi there. Hi. Phil, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Good, nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't too bad actually. Okay, come in, take a seat. Thank you very much. And uh, so, why are you here? <laughs> well, I want to get an accurate reading of my body fat. Okay. Um, there's there's many methods which you can do out there. Mm -hmm. I've tried the. Um, the body composition analyzer, right. uh, which I've recently <laughs> posted on social media, which you might have had the opportunity yeah. to see. Um, so it came out as 16, I think 16.8 percent. Okay. Um, I had done the uh, skin caliper reading, and this, but this was many years ago, back right. in 2012, just before a competition which I was doing. Okay. And um, at the time, the reading came out as. 3.5 percent okay which I'm really not too sure about you know it, you know lots of people have questions as to how accurate the different different methods are um, and that's what kind of drove me here today um, obviously a good friend of mine Jamie Alderton yep. actually recommended me to come and uh, see yourself so um, I'm very glad that he's actually introduced me to yourself so today is judgment day okay. and I want to learn where where am I all right. In terms of my body, what's the, what's the difference between the DEXA scan and any other method? Okay, well, you, you come to the right place. You want a, a very accurate uh, reading for your fat and muscle, um, and DEXA is the gold standard. So it's regarded as the, the gold standard for, for measuring fat and lean mass. Um, it's used by professional sports teams like Chelsea, Arsenal, England rugby, um, and it's used in all the sports science departments of the best sports universities like Loughborough and Bath. Um, DEXA differs from uh, calipers and bioimpedance, so that electrical thing you tried was, is called a bioimpedance monitor. Right. Um, so bioimpedance doesn't measure fat at all. What it does is it sends a, a current through part of your body, um, so it measures electrical resistance, and then it uses a calculation to make a, a, an assumption about water, and then it uses another calculation to make an assumption about fat. So it's not measuring fat at all, it's taking two calculations to get there. Um, right. Skin calipers, they're literally scratching the surface, they're just pinching the surface. And if you were 3.8% body fat, you'd probably be <laughs> nearly in the grave. Yeah, now. close to death, yeah, right? close to death, because you know, a guy needs about at least 5% what we call essential fat levels. Just, you need fat to, to survive and function, okay? Mm -hmm. So as Jamie uh, demonstrated, you know, a lot of people guessed his body fat being single figure 6 to 8%. That's where about 95% of the guesses came in at. Um, and he was actually 12.3%. 12. Yeah, so um, DEXA tends to give you, because we're measuring all the fat in your body, it's, it's an x-ray, it's using a, a mild dose of x-ray, um, it's measuring all the fat in your body, so we tend to get a higher uh, figure than people are used to. So, um, but it is the gold standard, so whatever you get here today, we're going to assume is the correct, the correct answer. Okay, so you said it, it measures like internal fat as well? Yes, yes, so we will give you, um, it's measuring all fat throughout the body, no matter where it's stored, and we will give you a very good estimate for visceral fat. And visceral fat is the, the bad fat, the toxic fat that surrounds the organs, mm -hmm. um, you know, linked with heart disease and diabetes. So right. not just the aesthetics, we, we give you a visceral fat estimate as well, which is about your health. So can a person look extremely lean on appearance but have a high amount of visceral fat? Absolutely, you can look lean and, and slim. We had a guy uh, in our first week um, very slim, small, you know, petite guy. He was only um, 69 kilos. Um, he was 31% body fat. Now that's not just overweight, that's obese. <laughs> what? Yeah. So He's an obese, yeah. skinny person. Yeah, so what we call skinny fat. So <laughs> from the outside, he looks, he looks pretty skinny and also he had very, you know, pretty high visceral fat as well. So, you know, 
calipers and bioimpedance is not going to tell you that. The other good thing we, we do with DEXA is we give you regional data, so we can tell you fat and lean mass on all parts of your body, uh, which those other methods just give you a single number. Right, right. Oh, amazing. Okay. All right. I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait to <laughs> learn it all. I okay. want to learn exactly. I heard also that um, it also measures like your bone density or something like that. Is yes, that right? yeah. So DEXA is the gold standard for measuring bone density. That's why they were invented, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Right. So um, most people, if you look up DEXA on Google, you'll find DEXA is related to bone density, osteoporosis, uh, bone fractures, etc. Um, uh, we give you a bone density figure. It's not diagnosable like a, like a bone density scan. It's a different type of scan. Right. But we give you a pretty good uh, average snapshot of, of your bone density. And you'll probably find, someone who does as many weights as you do, that your bone density is pretty high. So if people have low bone density, one of the um, you know, remedies for that is to do uh, weight training. That strengthens the bones. What would you say is uh, perhaps the, the average weight? Oh, I don't know. Is there an average weight for bone density for a certain age bracket of men, for instance? Well, the interesting thing is going to be, I'm, I'm going to wait until we do your report, actually. Right. So um, I'm going to let you start you thinking about how heavy your skeleton is. Okay. I'm going to ask you, how heavy do you think your skeleton is? <laughs> My your dry skeleton. No idea. I would Don't you weigh roughly? Um, so recently it was 99 point something. Right, so around 100 kilos, kilos right? Yeah. So how much do you think the skeleton weighs of that? So not maybe about a kilo. Okay, all right. That's an interesting answer. Uh, I, I <laughs> okay. have no idea <laughs> all right. how much a skeleton would weigh. Right, you know? we'll, we'll see when we get the bone density uh, the figure. Okay. Okay, all right. But um, should we yes. start? Yes. Okay. Let's get Let's started. All right. all right. Okay, I'm ready, Roger. Right, we're going to take your height and weight. Can you right. just stand really back to the wall, uh, step forward about six inches from the wall. There we go. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. There we go. Just back a little bit. And oh. you can take a little step back. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. And sorry. Okay, step away. I've got your one seven seven and a half. Is it? Yeah. I was taught I keep getting shorter. What is the deal? Okay, we need to do this again. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> oh man! You hear your one seven seven and a half. Okay, news right. is getting bad already. Okay, okay. If you just step over that side of the scale. Just give me a second. I'm going to zero the scale and step on. And we have. 98.6 kilos. I'm dropping weight okay. as well. All right. Is that bad? <laughs> It's right at this stage, I guess. Okay. It's all good. All right, excellent. 98.6. 98.6. For okay. those who ask, how much do I weigh? Right. Okay. So now I need you on the table um, with your head at this end. Okay. And there we go. Okay. Right. Now, if you just stay there for a minute, I'm just going to uh, enter your details. And we'll. Um... That's pretty cozy. Yeah. <laughs> Smile for the camera. So, what's the damage? <laughs> okay, well, we'll find out in a minute, but this is you. So what we do now is we analyze the image. Oh my gosh. So I'm just gonna lighten your body image to make it easier to, to analyze, okay? And now we're gonna pass these lines through specific points in your body. So just line up uh, the top of your pelvis there, and go through points in the shoulder. Okay, same down here. 
through uh, the femur and then make sure we've got there we go, I'm trying to try and keep the hands out of the out of the leg area. Mm -hmm. That basically is it. And I'm not gonna flash your result up. <laughs> I'm gonna keep you in suspense and we'll wait for it to come out the printer. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, there we are. Report. There we go. Right. Oh, now, right. Where are we today? We're here. And um, that was the first one that was the uh, right, okay. So that's uh, you might wanna watch it come out the printer. <laughs> All right, here goes, here goes. So, watch but don't touch. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Judgment Day is finally here. About to find out the result. How much fat I've got, basically. Now, remember we said that Jamie was, uh, Jamie was 12.3% body fat? Yes. Okay. So, will you feed or will you not? <laughs> and what did your, what did that bioimpedance uh, monitor say? We said I was 16.8. Right, okay. Well, we probably have some good news on that front. Bioimpedance is not very reliable. Right, right. okay. All right, well if you get changed, and right. um, I'll talk you through your report. All right. see how much body fat you've got. Okay, okay. nice okay. one. Okay, right. hey, so, crunch time, let's find out. What is the damage? <laughs> what is the damage, okay. <laughs> All right, so Roger, this is your three-page DEXA report. Okay. Uh, okay, and I'm going to take it through, uh, take you through it step by step. All right. Okay. So the first thing we see uh, is your DEXA image. Okay, that's the color image here, mm -hmm. and um, you can see straight away that you're doing pretty well because um, fat is orange, lean is red, and bone is blue. And I don't know about you, but I can't see much orange on there at all. Okay. 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 Right? So it's a good first visual sign. Good first visual. All right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, this uh, image is their wake-up call, right? So they may have a lot of fat, or you know, they're on a program and it's just not working. This this will be their wake-up call. We have we have clients who have this as their screensaver on their on their phone, right? right? As, as well as on their fridge door. <laughs> okay. So this table underneath now, body composition results, is concerning itself just with fat distribution around the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see here uh, the body is broken down into the regions of the body. Okay. Arms, legs, and trunk. And we come to a subtotal line and then the head. But for body composition, we ignore the head and most of what we do is down here in the subtotal line. Okay, mm -hmm. so we just ignore the head. We're not interested in the head. Mm -hmm. And for very tall people, we have to leave the head off the table. Okay. 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 So here you can see uh, the absolute amounts of fat on various parts of your body. So in your arms, you're carrying around 900 grams of fat, <laughs> which considering the size of your arms is pretty low. <laughs> okay. All right. Around five kilos in your trunk and around 2.4 kilos uh, in, your, in each leg. Okay. Right. And again, judging, going by your weight and uh, the physical size of you, they are pretty small amounts of fat. So in total, you're carrying 11 and a half kilos of body fat. 11 and a half kilos. Right. Okay. So now you have something to visualize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm just right. thinking of the weights in the gym. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then underneath here, we can see Android and Gynoid. Mm -hmm. And Android and Gynoid, those areas are marked on the black and white diagram here. We've got the Android region, which is the belly region. Okay, mm -hmm. so everyone, all guys are interested in their belly fat. Mm -hmm. And we've got the thigh fat here, the Gynoid region. So looking just at the Android, you're carrying 680 grams of fat in the belly area. Right. Okay, that's pretty low. That's pretty low. So all good so far. Okay. Um, then we've got your, we'll ignore this comment for the moment. Then we've got total mass. And we can see your total mass by DEXA is 98.9. And there's a slight discrepancy with your weight on the scale, and that's because of these estimates we have to make about the head, okay? Which is another reason we ignore the head in body composition. Okay. Right? Because it's an encased piece of bone, so it's harder to make, make the, uh, the uh, calculation. Right. Good. So, now, crunch time. The figure we look at here is percent fat, and we're going to read down to the subtotal line, and you are 12.4% body fat. 12.4? Yeah. I am 12.4%. Okay. And Jamie was 12.3. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that I'm trying to rub anything in. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, All right. a good number and a much better number than yeah, the yeah. Um, bioimpedance thing, which had you at what, 16? 16.8%. Uh, 16 right. um, it's very interesting though, because I've, you know, I've, I've, I've never measured myself as being in 
anything more than single digits. <laughs> right. But mainly by calipers, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So exactly. calipers, as I said, they're only taking the subcutaneous fat. They're not looking at any of the internal fat at all. Mm. So they always give a lower number. Everyone is used to a lower number on calipers. That's why everyone is guessing your body fat is guessing around the eight, nine percent mark. Yeah. Um, but it's actually 12.4. But that's a great number. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is yeah, a great exactly. number. Okay. Okay. All right. The last two columns here, we've got percent fat percentile. We now compare you with a population data set of 20,000 US citizens for age, sex, match for age, sex, and ethnicity. Okay. So to, very quickly, this AM column, age matched, okay, you're at number two. That means that when we compare you with black American men age 36, you are in the top 2% body fat wise, you're in the best 2%. So less than 2% of, of uh, black American men your age have lower body fat and the other 98% all have higher body fat. Wow, look at that. So, so it's a great place to be, all right? Um, this chart here is really just mapping a few things. It's mapping your age on this axis. It's mapping your body fat percentage on this axis, so about to say 12.4. Um, and then you can see that all those uh, black American men, all right, 95% of them are in here and 98% of them are sitting above you, okay? And one or 2% are sitting below you. They're actually off the chart, okay? Oh. So you are off the chart, you're off the scale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, very interestingly, and I know you'll, you'll uh, you, know, you know this and talking to all your uh, followers about this, this is your BMI, okay? Your right. body mass index. Mm -hmm. And for people like you who do weights, do bodybuilding, do a lot of sport, who are very lean, you are obese. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So the interesting thing is, and the, the ridiculous thing is, if you went to the doctor, he would say, you need to lose weight, <laughs> okay? You're too fat, <laughs> okay? But in fact, uh, we can see you're very low body fat and just uh, full of lean mass, mm -hmm. right? So we ignore, we're not in body scan, we're not interested in BMI, we're not interested in weight. Weight and BMI are a byproduct of how much fat you've got and how much lean you've got, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So, some clients come in and they say, I want to be a certain weight, I want to be 80 kilos, I want to be 90 kilos. And it's, well, where does that figure come from, right? You, you, nobody needs to lose weight. Everybody needs to lose fat, mm. pretty much, okay? Yeah. So here in this uh, table down here, uh, we've got some uh, indices, some number crunching based on your adipose tissue, your fat, okay? Um, and the beauty of DEXA is because we isolate fat and we isolate lean, uh, I can have a pretty good idea of what you look like just by looking at these numbers. Right? With a BMI, I have no idea. So if, if somebody gave me this BMI, I don't know whether you're, you look like you or whether you're seriously obese yeah, until yeah. you walk in the door. But with these numbers, I have a much better idea. So you That's can, interesting. Yeah. It's almost like um, someone else could do the scan and then give you the report and you have a look at it and you can have a visual already. Exactly, like. yeah. It's because BMI is so general, right? It's, it's like um, you know, the housing price index or house prices across the UK. They might be X percent. But what are they in London, or what are they in Scotland, what are they in Wales, etc. So mm -hmm. this gives us much more detail, it really gives us a granular level of detail. So some numbers to look for, and they're all pretty good, Roger. Okay. Um, uh, total body percent fat, now this is using the, the figure with the head, but you're actually better than that, so your total body percent fat is actually 12.4%, so that's one number you're going to hold, hold with you. Mm -hmm. The next one, fat mass to height squared, is your fat mass index, and this is a much more important number, a much more meaningful number than body mass index, because it's just based on the fat in your body. Yeah. Okay. So at 4.09, it's an index, it's a great number, um, but if you want to lose fat, that number is a number you can target to move down. Right. right. With BMI, we don't know whether that should move up or down. If you put on muscle, it'll probably move up. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can end up losing muscle, putting on fat, and it remains in the same area. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, now, the next one here, your android to gynoid ratio. That's the ratio of the fat in your belly to the fat in your thighs. Mm -hmm. And for a guy, we like that to be less than one, and you are. 0.93. If you're more than one, it suggests you're carrying too much fat in the uh, belly region, which is unhealthy. Okay. All right. Okay. Doing good. Uh, yeah, you're doing good. You're good all the way through. So the next two lines are really just telling us how fat is distributed around the body, trunk to limb fat and percent of fat in trunk to percent of fat in legs. And that's just so no real thresholds there, but if that number moves, you'll know how fat is shifting through your body. Okay, is it in my limbs or is it in my trunk? Mm -hmm. All right. And now uh, the last three numbers on here, estimated VAT, nothing to do with money, <laughs> okay? Est estimated VAT is estimated visceral adipose tissue. And that's a very good estimate of your visceral fat. And that's yeah. the fat we spoke about earlier, which is the bad fat around your organs, yeah. right? okay? Um, and the number we look at here is the last one, estimated visceral fat area. 
and 44.7 is a great number. It's a very good number. We need that to be between zero and 100. Okay. Once we get to 100, it's increased risk, and once we get over 160, it's high risk. Right. So we have a lot of uh, male clients who are well over 100, oh, and, wow. and there's no way of knowing that from the outside. Okay. All right. Mm. Have you had any like athletes or like, bodybuilders other than Jamie that's come in, and obviously Ryan, who's perhaps got um, high numbers in that area? Um, not with, to be fair, not with athletes. So uh, visceral fat responds very well to diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. So people who do a, a great uh, exercise regime like you and those guys, um, they tend to have a pretty low visceral fat. It responds very well. So we had one client who was 125, so in the increased risk area, mm. and within nine weeks he got it down to 75. Okay. So great result. Okay. Cool. Now. This table here, and I've got a smile on my face, <laughs> is um, lean indices. So we've had some fat indices, these are now two lean indices. And the first one of these is your lean mass index, your lean to height squared, okay? And you are at 26.2, and I can tell you without shadow of a doubt, that is the highest number we've ever had at body scan, okay? Did, did you hear that? Sorry. <clears throat> Well, could you repeat that? Please? Drum roll. <laughs> Drum roll. Roger, you have the highest lean mass index of anyone we've had at body scan. This is an emotional moment for me right now. Oh, this is brilliant. That's it. So. Yeah. So, I mean, just by looking at you, we can you know, see you full of muscle, and that um, uh, reflects it there. Um, you can see you're in the top 96% for lean mass index when compared to uh, black American guys age 36. All right? So, wow. more muscle than just about everyone. <laughs> and the next number, this one, long-winded, long appendicular lean mass index, appendicular lean to height squared, that is the lean in your limbs, okay? Right. And again, that is the biggest number we've ever had at body scan. Another drum roll. <laughs> I see myself a hand clap for that. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's just, you know, the, the visual is reflected in the number. So as I said, yeah. by looking at these numbers on a DEXA scan, I have a pretty good idea what you look like. Looking at those uh, lean indices, I just know, A, you're very muscular, and B, you've got um, you know, very muscular limbs. Yeah. And we never get that from you know, calipers or BMI, etc. So. Yeah, no, there's no way at all in finding out, is there? Mm. Wow, that is so interesting. So that's page one. Okay, page two. So DEXA is a three compartment model. It measures three things, okay? It right. measures bone, it measures fat, and it measures lean mass. Mm. And here for the first time, we see all three of those things, bone, fat, and lean mass. Now, I asked you earlier about the weight of your skeleton, and you gave me an answer that was completely opposite to what anyone else would, would tell me. Not really. So most people think their skeleton is about 10 kilos, 15 kilos. Uh, you said one, <laughs> you were way the other side. And your skeleton, your skeleton weighs about three and a half kilos. Three and a half. 3.5 kilos. Um, and as I said, a lot of people are very surprised by that. That's a pretty, um, it's at the upper end of a, of a male skeleton weight, which is two and a half to three and a half kilos. So very um, healthy weight to be. The upper end. Yeah, okay. the upper end, okay. Um, that we've already seen on page one, your fat mass. We're reading to the subtotal line, 11.5 kilos. Mm -hmm. And now for the first time, we see your lean mass. And there we see it again to the subtotal line, 78.879 kilos. Uh, now, lean mass is not just muscle, it's all soft tissue that's not fat, so it does include internal organs and connective tissue and ligaments, etc. Right. right. But any change in that number is a change in muscle, because all the other stuff stays the same. Yeah. Right? So we assume all that sort of the organs, etc. are constant, so any change in lean is a change in pure muscle. Right, right. So is this going to go up or down? Uh, well, hopefully up. <laughs> <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the other things here, so this is just fat-free mass, uh, and then total mass, and then we've already seen percent fat. So once again, 12.4% body fat. So this is lean mass, and this is what? Uh, lean plus bone. So this is basically fat-free mass, everything that's not fat. So it's okay. the addition of these two columns. Got okay. you, got you. All right. Right. Okay, yeah. All right. And finally, page three. This uh, is an average, or a snapshot, of your bone density. So DEXA is the gold standard for measuring bone density as well as measuring body composition. Uh, if, we, if we wanted to uh, diagnose your bone density, we'd put you on the scanner, but we'd give you a different type of scan, but this is a very good average. And to cut to the chase, um, your, this is you, the little white cross, and anything in that blue zone, that solid blue banding, is completely normal, all right? So you have decent bone density. Cool. Um, so it's quite uh, common for people who shift weights to, for this to be a little higher. 
So um, Jamie, for example, I think he was closer to the top line, mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, it's a completely healthy place to be. All right? The number we use is your Z score, and you can see you are plus 0.3, okay? And that basically means that little cross is 0.3 of the way up from the zero line. So the top line is plus two, that's plus one, and you're plus 0.3. And sorry, what does that mean again? So this is a figure of how dense your bones are and therefore how strong your bones are. Okay. So if, you're, if your bone density falls, your bones become weaker. All right. Okay. Yeah. And if your bone density falls, your skeleton will get lighter. As your bone density improves, your, um, your, bone, your bones will get heavier. But a very healthy place to be. That's cool. That's good. So in, um, let's say, in summary, probably all on the first page, you have great body fat 12.4. Against a population, you are in the top one or two percent. So you're off the scale, quite literally. <laughs> um, you're, and most remarkably, uh, these uh, lean indices are um, off the scale. So you are, um, you have great lean mass, muscle mass, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see, Roger, how DEXA gives us detail that we can work with. It gives us meaningful numbers, um, whereas things like BMI and weight you know, don't really tell us anything. Yeah. Yeah. And it's quite interesting because you have loads of people, as you mentioned, always talking about they want to lose a certain amount of weight mm -hmm. without really looking into well, what exactly what weight are we talking about here? Exactly. exactly. Can I just show you an example of a, a guy who was, was slim, you know, <laughs> thin on the outside, we spoke about skinny <laughs> yeah. fat, okay? Yeah. So here we go. So this is a young guy, only 23 years old, you can see he's only 69 kilos, he's got a very slim profile. All right, mm. but he's 31.2% body fat, which makes him obese. Uh, he also has very low lean mass, so 14.7 compared to your 23 odd. Okay, and the uh, BMI. It's absolutely normal. <laughs> yeah, completely normal. So, you know, the doctor would say, fine, you know, nothing to worry about, you're perfect weight. But Dexter tells a very different story. So, health wise, how would that affect his health? Well, I'm not a doctor, so I, I can't you know, talk about that. But clearly he would do uh, better to do well to lose some fat. You can also see his visceral fat is heading towards the danger zone oh, at, 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 uh, of 100, at 90. Um, yeah. And yours was, what, 40? 40, yeah, 44. Yeah, so, but that's the beauty of DEXA. That is amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you very much for all this information. It's, um, it's really opened my eyes um, for many reasons, really. It's, um, it, Obviously, it encourages you to look into your diet to make sure that you're just eating the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot to do with eating, obviously training, which I do. Um, bone density, how could I improve that, would you say? Well, bone density is improved by doing weight. So where you are on the scale now, um, you know, if you continue doing them, you're a pretty young guy, <laughs> um, you know, that will could well gradually um, uh, go up over time. Mm -hmm. So resistance training, if someone does have low bone density, resistance training is very good for, for improving bone density. Right. Okay, it moves slowly, but it does move up over time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Great. Well, thank you okay. very much for your today. Okay. Cheers. 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 Thanks, Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.